So, Bismillah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salawat, wa salam ala rasulullah, wa alihi, wa sahbihi, wa min wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Dear participants, hope everything is well with all of you, insha'Allah ta'ala. My name is Sayyid Jamaluddin Behrang Miri. I am from Sweden, originally from Iran, Chechnya, and Arab heritage. I will appreciate if everybody just mute your microphones out of the convenience for, for the session, please. It's an honor to have you all participating, and it's an honor to have this distinguished panel of students and professors and friends and colleagues and ustadas and ustads of uh, dear Professor Bedri Rahimullah. This session will be focused on the perspective of the friendships with the Professor uh, Bedri Rahimullah and how the students view their relationship and what they have learned. So it's, it's going to be a very beneficial and interesting panel discussion. Just to give you a little bit more information regarding the uh, session, we will conduct this during one and a half hour. We will have two keynote speakers, uh, which will be Professor Rahmatullah and Professor Suleiman. I will introduce them briefly short, shortly soon. We will also have uh, four very distinguished panelists and uh, the last 20 minutes, we will have Q&A. So all of you participants are welcome to write your questions in the chat here in the Zoom. And if it's possible, we can also allow you to open up your microphone and ask the question uh, live and direct, inshallah. Uh, but please have your microphone muted until then. And uh, when you want to ask a question, you can raise your digital hand, which is a function that Zoom uh, has to offer, inshallah. So let me just briefly, before I present the organizers for this uh, uh, session today, uh, uh, could you please mute your microphone, please? Jazakallah khairan. Before I present our, our panelists and keynote speakers and the organizers of this uh, session today, I just wanted to, uh, wanted our dear Professor Dalin to uh, bless this meeting by reciting some Quran. So welcome, Professor Dari. Uh, could you please unmute your mic, uh, unmute your microphone, please? Jazakallah khairan. Yeah, Professor Dari, welcome to my side. تذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين فلا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشكرون ولا نبلو أنكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات فبشر الصابرين الذين إذا صابتهم مصيبة قالوا قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين For the soul of the all prophets 
for the soul of the saints and especially for the soul of our beloved Ustaz uh, Malik Bedri Rahmatullah Aleyh. Let's read the Fatiha, inshallah. Jazakallah khair and Professor Darim for this beautiful recitation. We really appreciate it. And thank you also for dedicating uh, it also to our dear Professor Badri Rahimullah. So welcome all participants. Uh, it's an honor to have you here. Once, <clears throat> once more, sorry. My name, my name is Sayyid Jamaluddin Bahraimiri. I'm at your service. I'm one of the co-founders of ISIP, International Students of Islamic Psychology which is one of the organizers of this very beneficial session today. So let me present the organizers. It is University Pendidikan Sultan Idris Malaysia, along with ISIP International Students of Islamic Psychology. We invite all of you to join this beneficial session today as a tribute to our Murabi, our professor and our teacher, uh, dear professor uh, Malik Badri Rahimatullah. Uh, and this session will be dedicated to listen to the perspectives of the students and the colleagues of his, inshallah. We will start with two keynote speakers. And please, uh, once more, uh, if you could mute your microphones during the session, we will be very uh, honored for that. And then the last part of the session, we will have also opportunity for Q and A's, questions and answers. So please feel free to write your questions in the chat. So let me just start by introducing our dear first keynote speaker, which is Professor Rahmatullah Khan. Professor Rahmatullah Khan bin Abdul Wahab Khan has, is very qualified, has many qualifications. He is a psychologist uh, from the South Australian Psychological Board. He's also a registered clinical, clinical psychologist. He is also a member of the Australian Psychology Society. He is also a member of the International Association for Applied Psychology. He is the president and life member of Malaysian Psychological Association. He is the founding member of Malaysian Society for Clinical Psychology. He has won many awards, and one is the Kesatria Manku Negara by, uh, that he received back in 2011. So there is a lot to say about our dear Professor Rahmatullah Khan. And without any other uh, with further ado, I want to I want to bring in Professor Rahmatullah Khan to give us the keynote speak. You're more than welcome, Professor Rahmatullah Khan. It's an honor to have you with us. Welcome. Assalamu uh, alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brother Sayyid Jamaluddin, um, chair for the session today. Um, uh, Professor Dr. Sulaiman Darin, uh, dear my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, there's too many of, of us here that I, uh, some of you I remember, uh, some of you may not be uh, uh, familiar with me, but um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure we, uh, one time or another, we have met our late uh, Professor Malik. <clears throat> uh, I would like to thank the, uh, the organization, uh, ISIT, for inviting me to uh, share with you some of my uh, uh, whatever experiences that I had with uh, Professor Malik. Um, I, um, I guess uh, uh, we, all of us, uh, now feeling the loss uh, that we, we can't really uh, describe. <clears throat> um, I, um, I actually um, knew about Prof. Malik when I was a student back in 1979, when I was studying uh, uh, psychology in Texas A&M, uh, I first heard about him uh, with, uh, with the book, the famous book. The, I still carry that book, The Dilemma of Muslim Psychologists. So this was the book that uh, was given to me uh, by a friend because uh, when I was in Texas, uh, I was the only Malaysian studying psychology there. Uh, the others were studying something else, they, but we were active. Some of them, we were active in the uh, Muslim Student Association. So as a result, they know I study psychology. They got this book and they gave me. 
they said brother you must read this book <laughs> so that's that's where i first uh, get to know um, at that time i never thought that i will meet i will meet this uh, great professor you know it's like you know you know when you read about somebody you uh, you you know it's, it's far fetched you will you know you thought oh, wow if you can meet him mashallah you know but you never know that you know uh, your dream uh, allah may give it you know if you have a very good dream about it and you think real hard about it inshallah you will meet the person you know so um and uh, and then when i know that he is a sudanese uh, and i know a lot of uh, sudanese brothers in uh, in the us you know i am quite very close with them so i you know it became very close to me you know so i i thought that wow this is really something you know so um and then when i uh, uh um, when i got married uh, my wife also have read a book of promali <laughs> and i still kept keep the book this book here islam and alcoholism you know so and then um, and then my wife uh, she she asked me you know do you know this professor or not very interesting book you know so we got to discuss you know and then um, i said yeah very interesting and you know we like so much to learn about it you know but you can't you know actually my my wife is in biochemistry it's a little bit different but then anyway uh, so what happened was um so we came back i got we got married came back got a son came back came back to malaysia and then um, and then uh, what happened was uh, and then suddenly i heard uh, uh, prof malik came to malaysia mashallah you know how uh, happy you would feel you know when you when you always think about the person you you never will ever meet you would think of that but then you suddenly you know you have the opportunity but at that time i was in kubang krian i was uh, in usm kubang krian and uh, uh, pro malik was invited to uh, present something in penang and some of my colleagues in penang they know me they said wow psychologist let's bring him to, to chair this session so i was asked to come to penang and chair pro malik's uh, session so that was very uh, enlightening you know you uh, you had the opportunity to meet and then uh, and then uh, uh, i try my very best uh, to join iium because at that time pro malik joined iium and then uh, i was in usm so i said wow how to how to go there so uh, it's really uh, what you call you sometimes you have to make sacrifices you know so i decided to leave uh, usm resign and join and join iium so that's what i did i left after 11 years with you i i you as usm so i left and joined uh, usm sorry i joined the uh, uia iium uh, in 1983 uh, and then uh, uh, that that goes you know Uh, we were you know in the same department and uh, there was a lot of going you know developing the program uh, we were developing the masters program at, at that time actually clinical masters and uh, that that goes on so so uh, and uh, 92 actually i joined sorry 92 i joined uh, i uh, resigned and then joined uh, uh, usm and uh, um, so at that time actually prof malik uh, already expanded the islam and psychology course uh, which was actually uh, started by uh, our uh, professor shamsur rahman uh, what professor shamsur rahman did was when he set up the department of psychology in iium uh, he was asked by the uh, rector to develop some courses and including islam and psychology and uh, i was told by prof shamsur rahman uh, that prof kamal hasan uh, gave him the book the same book you know this uh, 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 dilemma of muslim psychology so uh, he developed the islam and psychology course based on also on on prof malik's book so when prof malik joined the department prof malik took over the course and improved on it you know 
so that was the the history of it um so uh, and then prof malik uh, uh, introduced several other postgraduate courses especially psychotherapy and uh, while teaching these courses he introduced the islamic elements in the mainstream of psychology uh, actually when when he was there uh, he was a very uh, what do you call he gave that strength to all of us you know all of us the other uh, staff in the department i especially me i was talking especially me we feel very what you call we feel very uh, uh, unsure you know when we were talking about islam and psychology but when prof malik is there you know he actually uh, um, you know he gave the strength to all of us so that's why you know this uh, development of islam uh, islamic psychology or islam and psychology become very flourish that time and uh, and then um, what you see um, what i felt was uh, after a couple a few years then prof malik left and went to istec not actually left but he was a uh, Uh, seconded to uh, the International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization, ISTEC, and there he also developed, uh, you know, several other uh, courses, and uh, he uh, uh, start teaching those uh, courses. You know why? Uh, what Al Ghazali and Ibn Khaldun Al Balkhi. Actually, that was where he started talking about Al Balkhi. Uh, and uh, and then uh, in 1997 uh from malik established the international association for muslim psychologists you see uh one thing about prof malik you have to understand this that he is someone who never gave up you know he always do that when there is some problem or whatever he will find ways and means you know to overcome it actually we are actually too slow for him tell you the tell you the truth <laughs> we are actually very slow you know compared to what he he has done you know he he has put the pace as very fast so in fact i noticed this in the when this uh, association was uh, established and they were doing some work and then uh, not much was uh, what you call uh, was achieved so uh, he was trying hard to push you know uh, so uh, and then uh, later on as you know uh, he pushed me he asked me to take over and be the president of the international islam association for muslim psychologists uh, how however we couldn't uh, get it registered in malaysia because this uh, this was one big problem because uh, the system of ROS in Malaysia uh, doesn't allow for foreign what you call people to hold position in an organization so we had that difficulty and he was trying you know we were trying to work uh, maybe set up a foundation or do something and we tried everything but he couldn't so finally uh, we discussed and prof malik discussed with me we decide okay let's try with indonesia so that's why the association moved to indonesia until now it's still indonesia but if you if you uh, so you see this that's why i'm saying that uh, prof malik is someone who will keep on pushing you know he will keep on doing things you know and uh, and that's why i think that is one big thing that we have to learn from him we should never give up uh, you see and then um what happened was um i uh, uh there was you know come come retirement from iium so i discussed with him i said you know uh prof what to do you know i should i leave or what and then he said to me brother go to upsi he was the one who asked me to uh, to move uh, to leave you know uh, i i had a contract with iium but he said never mind you go to upsi uh, so that's why i left and joined upsi in 2009 
until now alhamdulillah and uh, uh, so uh, you know it's like we extend and try to uh, develop because we cannot uh, develop something from only one place that's why if you see uh, what prof malik has done uh, you will notice that he travel frequently to uh, indonesia uh, he he goes to pakistan he goes to uh, istanbul to turkey and he goes to europe so he goes everywhere you see this is something that we have to also uh, emulate you know uh, if you want to be a scholar you want to it's, it's like dawah you know you cannot stay at your place and just you know hope that things will will accomplish you see you must not be just uh, confined to one place if you notice that there are some difficulty then you move on so this is what actually i i gathered from him uh, and uh, uh, and then actually uh, uh, towards i think uh, when i was in uh, upsi uh, i go because i stayed in gomba and he was in uh, ium at that time he, uh, before he left uh, finally you know uh, so um, we i used to meet him in the masjid and discuss a few things sometime i bring salami so we went to see uh, to see him so during that time uh, he discussed with me and i interviewed him about the his book you know this uh, the book on the uh, abu zaid al balkhi so that's where uh, i uh, did that publication on the book because at that time also the book has been published but it is still not uh, widely known so we want to put in the journal to talk about it so that people uh, know about it you see uh, because uh, you see i asked him about about uh, islamization and adaptation of cbt you know cognitive behavior therapy being the only task because we know that uh, how to islamize psychology the, the the trend now is cbt so is that the only way should we just uh, islamize uh, and adapt this cbt uh, but he mentioned that it cannot be the final aim he said you cannot do it because uh, you cannot stop there you see uh, because uh, for cognitive behavior therapy has also passed two waves uh, and now the third third wave is coming actually is near because the spiritual therapy uh, and mindfulness and all that which has roots in buddhist uh, tradition and acceptance and commitment this actually reminds us of the uh, what you call religious acceptance of predestination you see so uh, so to him in mindfulness the person is actually advised to meditate and focus on his present emotions thoughts and sensations whereas acceptance and uh, commitment simply mean that one should accept what is not within his control and commit himself to do what can improve and enrich his life so these are actually uh, what we normally receive uh, advice from the muslim uh, you know fuqaha you see it because we cannot control you know ourselves we have to you know, so this is actually uh, we have to accept isn't it so that's why that is acceptance you see so uh, so this is one thing that uh, that how we need to um, uh, take this um, uh, mindfulness commitment therapy and all that and uh, and work through it you know islamizing it in a way isn't it or bring it back you know because people are not talking about the the uh, the what you call the role of uh, religion uh, so and so another thing is actually what he cautioned us is that uh, the influence of positive psychology and emotional also emotional intelligence so this is also imminent so we need to also uh, you know think about that so um, actually uh, uh, we have actually lost a uh, murabi uh, 
I think it's like a mujadid for us now because you know, I think we'll have to, you know, we'll have to work uh, real hard so that we can uh, get, you know, some of us to keep on, you know, pushing these ideas and and uh, continue what uh, Prof Malik has done because he has is the cornerstone that we need to to work at. So I think uh, with that maybe I. Uh, would like to end here. Uh, may Allah forgive, uh, forgive us for our shortcomings, you know, and may Allah uh, place from Malik uh, right in the you know, in Jannah, inshallah. I mean, I mean, Ya Rabbi Alameen. I mean, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you so much, Professor Rahmatullah Khan. What a beautiful background story, what a beautiful uh, nasiha and advice you have given to all of us. You mentioned Professor Nalik Badri, rahimullah. he was very fast. He was doing dawah with uh, Islamic psychology as his main tool. You mentioned also he was a globetrotter. And I was thinking about Ibn, Ibn Battuta, rahimullah. He traveled all around the world. And that's exactly what uh, Professor Badri, rahimullah, did. Uh, to do the da'wah of Islamic psychology. We hope that we can keep his legacy alive here, Professor Rahmatullah Khan. Our generation, is uh, when that is our duty to do. So Jazakallah Khairan for giving us this nasiha. And thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and thank you for uh, being part of the Islamic Association of Muslim Psychologists and all of this beneficial work you're doing as lecturer and as scholar. We do see the scholars as the inheritors of the Prophet, so we always appreciate you. Thank you so much, Professor Rahmatullah Khan. So we give a round of digital applause to Professor Rahmatullah Khan. You can use the digital um, function at Zoom. Thank you so much. It's an honor having you with us. So we'll go to next keynote speakers, dear brothers and sisters and distinguished participants. Let's welcome Professor Suleiman Darin. Uh, he took his PhD in Le Leeds University, UK. The title of the thesis was Divine Love and Sufism. He's right now teaching full-time in Marmara University in Turkey, Istanbul, teaching Sufism. His great interest is to benefit from Sufism and the works of Imam Ghazali, Rahimullah, Maulana Rumi, Rahimullah, and from the likes of psychological perspective. We also have honor to have a halaqa with Professor Darin every B weekly Sunday, and you're all welcome to join. It's called Comparison of Psychologies, uh, Psychologies where we read the works of Imam Ghazali and try to understand it from different psychological aspects. And so this is something that Professor Darin, together with ISIP, International Students of Islamic Psychology, is doing. He also has a weekly radio TV program called Sufism and Psychology in Turkey. So if you know Turkish, you're more than welcome to look at it. I, I will try to watch it. And I've seen some episodes on YouTube also, mashallah, it's very good. He has made around five programs with Ustad Malik Badri, rahimullah, besides participating with him in four international symposium on Islamic psychology. So without any further ado, let us welcome our dear professor, uh, Suleiman Darin. Welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear Ustaz, Professor Rahmatullah, Brother Salafi, Brother Ibrahim. I greet you all from Istanbul. Uh, I was not lucky to meet uh, Ustaz Malik Bedi for a long time uh, before, but I met him in the last three years of his life. Therefore, I, I like this because uh, maybe Rahmatullah knows his uh, you know, uh, middle age. I know his very old age. So I was very close to him, Alhamdulillah. And really, uh, you can appreciate a mountain from a far away. When you're close to a mountain, you don't know how huge the mountain is. The more you go away from the mountain after he's passing away, really, he left an emptiness in our hearts that no one can feel. Therefore, you know, uh, we should be uh, really uh, very, uh, what you call it, grateful to his uh, works uh, and to his, uh, mashallah, dedication. Now, Ustaz uh, Rahmatullah said that he was very dedicated. And I will tell you, he, at the age of 90s, he came to my uh, studio from very far away, like two hours driving. And he had an operation with his right limb, uh, limp, uh, I think. And he was uh, limping, you see. So even with this condition, he would ne never refused my invitations. 
he always came and I put them in YouTube. You can watch the episodes. Of course, that was Turkish and English. So I cut out only the English part. So you can uh, easily listen to the English one only. So I also witnessed when he was in Istanbul, his writing of the, his last book. So, you know, he fought for the uh, secular psychology all his lifetime, you know, uh, he fought with Freud, his, uh, you know, nonsense uh, ideas about human nature, about dreams. Uh, and this became, as you all know, this story, Freud became like a prophet, unfortunately, for the secular uh, psychologists. And his ideas were unsuitable, like uh, Wahi. So he had to fight, and he even admitted that fighting Freud in Islamic countries is more difficult than fighting him in the Western world. You know, that's, that's a rather uh, dichotomy, unfortunately, dilemma for Muslims. You know, you find that in Egypt, in uh, Jazair, people write articles praising Freud that, you know, he's like a savior. You know, so uh, he had a very difficult job. But he has done the uh, difficult job, you see. He opened, opened the path for us. As you know, I'm a psychologist uh, by training. I had my PhD in UK, and at that time, I had a little bit interested in the psychology of love. Then I studied the psychology, the love chapter of Kitab uh, al Mahabba in uh, Al Ghazali. And I found it really very psychological, you know. He is uh, giving us the reasons why we love each other, because we love someone who helps us who causes us or birth, you know, or parents, then we love the one who is similar to us. So at that time I had very much, uh, you know, uh, what you call love and uh, desire to learn psychology. And I kept reading about psychology and Sufi books and combined them. But of course, then I met uh, the books of uh, Ustaz Malik Pedro Rahimahullah, especially Kitab al-Tafakkur, Contemplation, you know, it was really very brilliant. You know, they, as Brother Rahmatullah said, he's a mujaddid or mujtahid. Both of them we can say about him. Mujaddid because he renewed the Islamic sciences like Imam Ghazali has done with Islamic sciences. As you know, he also uses Imam Ghazali very much. Also, his character is like Imam Ghazali because he learned the Western psychology so well. When he criticized Western psychology, he shakes from the roots. Not just like, you know, sometimes we Muslims, we go, and choose the easy path. Islam is the deen al-haq, we are the truth, and all else is the false. But he showed us the falsity of the Western psychology, especially when it comes to sexuality, homosexuality, AIDS, you know, this drug addiction. All the premises of the Western psychology due to fraud is wrong, you see. You are establishing a psychology. I, I mean, you, are, you have received a little path but you don't know, is it a lamb or is it a dog? If it's a lamb, you have to feed it with grass, you see. If it's a dog, you have to feed it with the meat. So you are giving wrong food. You don't uh, admit the soul. You just uh, feed the human nature with material food. You will poison it. So uh, from the very beginning, uh, Malik, Ustaz Malik Petri was uh, trying to decufization take the kufr out of psychology because most of the psychology today, if you really believe it, I think you uh, leave Islam because you believe that there is no spirit, there is no soul, there is, there is no revelation, there is no God, everything happens by itself. So you're not a believer anymore. Unfortunately, many Muslim psychologists today, they fall into this trap. So by admitting, accepting the Western psychology, Sometimes some people lose their faith. Hence, the first job of Malik Petri was to take the kufr out of psychology and to bring Islam into the center of psychology. I think the most powerful uh, aspect of Muslims today as scientists is psychology. Maybe if I am a historian, I can have a lot of faults and problems in history. But when I defend psychology, you know, Ilm al nafis Islam gives so much information on the human psyche. So as Muslims, we should be, be you know, uh, boasting about our Quran and Hadith because whatever the Quran says about the soul, about the human nature, it is truth, alhamdulillah. And always Malik Badri told me, I am against the armchair philosophy of psychology. You know, he said Freud, he sat down in a comfortable chair, you know, and he said man is evil. 
but only acts on the premises of uh, aggressive drives and sexual drives. How did he know this? Did he test every human being? Did he check every human being and he arrived this, uh, you know, uh, result? No, he was sitting in his armchair and he said, all the uh, tests and these uh, researches, positive researches uh, in the Western psychology, 99% we accept, but we reject the psychology which is the philosophy of psychology, not real psychology, armchair philosophy, he always calling this. Alhamdulillah, uh, you know, he also used psychology as a dawa tool, because as I said, we are so strong. We, if we discuss with any Western psychologist or uh, philosopher about the nature of man, I think uh, we will win the uh, dispute because we have so many information from the Holy Quran and from, of course, all, all ancestors from, uh, you know, Abu Zaid al balqi for example, Imam Ghazali, Rumi, they, whatever they said about human soul is really very close to today's understanding in the modern uh, psychology. So my close with Ustaz Malik Pedr was, he always asked me to bring some students from Malaysia, from uh, Sudan. I was trying to uh, do my best and it is in this very old age, he never stopped to help Umba. When I asked him, uh, can I have an appointment with you? Can I visit you tomorrow? The answer most of the time said, yes, uh, all my time is yours. Such a friendly, such a fatherly figure. I mean, such a successful person in his age, so much busy with all over the world, uh, giving me time and, you know, long time actually, he never said no. Whenever I visited him, it was me who left the meeting, not him. So such a fatherly, such a generous personality I have never seen in my life. So much dedication to truth. As I said, maybe Brother Jamal, you can sh share. I send you a picture uh, to your uh, WhatsApp. If you share it, that's the, one of the last symposiums we have done together. I was sharing this session, Brother Rahmatullah, as you was sharing one of the early ones. So one of his last, uh, you know, uh, uh, symposiums I was sharing. Also, I was uh, translating. You see, this is 2019, uh, 45th May, almost two years ago. And you can see Abdullah Rothman, he's very close uh, student, me in the middle. And mashallah, Ustaz Malik Padris, he was a very tall and strong man, as you all know. But uh, due to maybe old age, he was becoming smaller and smaller, but he was becoming a giant in terms of the, you know, uh, in terms of the, you know, his contribution to Islamic uh, psychology. My real, uh, you know, uh, cooperation with him was about his last book. His last book is called Ta'amulatul Nafsiyya Hawla al-Jamani bil Atifiyya fi Hayati al-Anbiya. This book was just published like in two, three weeks ago, if I am not wrong. I don't have the copy of the printed uh, uh, title, but I have it, the PDF. Uh, he sent me PDF before so as I can check it. And I translated this uh, title, uh, Brother Ibrahim, where are you? You can check my you know, uh, translation. Psychological contemplation over the emotional aspects in the lives of the prophets. So this is last book. And out of this book, even this book was published, we have done like uh, five, six series. He came to studio, which was in the Asian side. So as I said, it's a very far away like to our driving, he never said no. Uh, you know, he came with little difficulty uh, because of these uh, problems with his lip. Uh, you know, his leg, hips, hips, I mean, so not lip, his right hip, I think. So he came and we talked about the prophets, the psychology of the prophets, uh, uh, emotional aspects in the lives of the prophets. So really, uh, you know, mashallah, uh, after fighting so many years with the Western psychology, now he was, he was bringing a lot of positive psychological aspects from the Holy Quran, from the Sunnah, and from the uh, lives of the prophets. But unfortunately, you know, uh, he was given only that much of time in his life. So we only have Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Musa Alaihi Salam, and Sayyidina Yusuf Alaihi Salam. And really, he made us contemplate very deeply why it, there is so much difference between Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. He was, uh, you know, he has very, very temperamental person. 
getting angrily very easy. He was a very strong person. And when you look at the Sayyidina Yusuf Ali Salam, he was such a very soft character. So he was explaining psychologically because he said, you know, uh, always we discuss this nature or nurture. Uh, what he said, uh, Allah has, Almighty has chosen prophets uh, in the best character, uh, you know, uh, will, this will be convenient for his time and place. When we look at the Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, you know, he was born in a slave community. If he was grown up in the nature of this slavery, he would be, you know, uh, maybe kind of uh, very low inferiority complex, maybe. Therefore, Allah uh, made him grow up in the palace of the Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the, you know, the, the most unjust uh, zalim of his time. He said, uh, I am your greatest Lord. So he was claiming prophethood. Not only that, he killed many innocent babies. According to some resources, like 700,000 babies he killed. So he had blood in his hand. Also, he built these giant temples, this ahram, these giant palaces. So people came from outside, were shocked uh, in these uh, huge, in front of these huge monuments, and they would feel immediately very lowly, inferior to the Pharaoh. So Allah wanted, uh, desired that the uh, Pharaoh uh, should, uh, you know, train and educate Sayyidina Musa alayhi So Sayyidina Musa alayhi saw the Pharaoh when he was becoming a sick, when he was going to bed with his, in his pajamas maybe, when he was coughing, when he was going to the toilet. So he saw him as like an ordinary man, not a Pharaoh, because no ordinary people couldn't even look at the face of Pharaoh. They were uh, banned to look at the face of the Pharaoh. So they thought Pharaoh is something really high, angelic or semi-god or something. So he says, from na in, in nature, he saw the weakness of, of the Pharaoh. Also by uh, his strong nature, sorry, by nurture, he was grown up in the palace of the Pharaoh, but by nature, Allah created him so strong. You know, imagine he was uh, helping the daughters of uh, Prophet Shuaib, sorry. He left it a uh, very, very big rock from the mouth of a well, so he, you know, hit the Egyptian with one fist. He killed him and see, Mr. Malik Peter says, even Muhammad Ali Kalai couldn't do that. You know, he was the heavyweight, uh, simple, what do you call it, uh, heavy fighter. Muhammad Ali Kalai, we all know him. He couldn't kill a man with one fist, but Sayyidina Musa was so strong. And uh, Mr. Malik Peter says, that was necessary in this time because Pharaoh was uh, like a great zalim. He was killing people. Uh, so you need a strong character to stand up against him and to declare the truth. Also, as I said, he should be a good example for the Ben Israel because Ben Israel was kept under slavery so long. They were all slave minded people. I don't want to go into too much detail. You will read the book, but I feel very lucky to witness Ustaz Malik Bedri's last days in Turkey, you know, making programs with him. And really, really his uh, character is the character of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was so modest, using uh, psychology to spread Islam, to make Dawa. Also, uh, giving all his time, 24 hours, seven days a week, for all his students. You know, uh, now after I listened to his wife, Fatima, then I realized, when I sent him a message, the, the same day he will send me back. Even in his old age, he never, uh, you know, uh, sent them like a week later. No, immediately the same day he replied the emails, WhatsApp messages. So you know, he said this. This is a salam, and his uh, service to his students, looking for them jobs. If someone lost a job, he was asking, "Can we find a job for so and so brother?" If someone wants to study psychology in Turkey, can we help this sister? And among them, I have seen two converts. Due to his endeavor, mashallah, he was teaching them psychology, also he was teaching them Islam. Only myself in the last very few days, I have seen two converts because of him. And I don't know how many, many people he, mashallah, caused for their hidayah. 
I don't know. So he's a very exemplary person defending Islam in every field of life, in psychology, in medicine, in social life, whatever you imagine. So he is a very good example for all of us, not just for psychologists, also for us, for Sufis, because he was trying to put Sufism as well, making psychology very spiritual. Therefore, inshallah, uh, I pray Allah, we follow his uh, good uh, example, we follow his path and make Islamic psychology the best paradigm, rahmatullahi alameen, as Allah says in the Holy Quran, we make Islamic psychology a cure for all uh, you know, nations, for all citizens of the world, of course, for Muslims first, then for all the others. Inshallah, we will achieve this. I hope one day we can uh, organize a big symposium where we can meet all the friends, colleagues of Ustaz Malik Bedri, his students and his lovers, come together and we can share these or experience with him in detail, inshallah. I thank you very much, Brother Jamaatin, for you organizing such a beautiful commemoration of these great Ustaz. And I thank you all the participants and speakers as well. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you. Ma'asalam. Jazakallah khairan. Round of applause. Please give digital applause to our dear Professor Suleiman Darin. Jazakallah khaira. Mashallah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. And uh, I also want to thank Dr. Salami and Professor Ibrahim for organizing this together with us. So thank you so much. Jazakallah khaira. And I just uh, caught a lot of things you said, Professor Darin, mashallah, that I really liked. You said he took away the kufu from the psychology. I like that framing. That was very good framing. We should quote you now, Professor Darin, next time we will have a quote with your picture and spread in, in WhatsApp, because that was a very good quote. Also that he wanted to bring Islam in the center of psychology, which is, subhanAllah, I think all of us uh, have thought about it before we even came across Islamic psychology, that there is something wrong with some aspect of the Western psychology's philosophical aspect. You were mentioning the critique they had against Sigmund Freud. And, and you know, we were reading, we all read the Quran, we try, we find Quran filled with psychology, right? And then we see that Professor Badr, rahimahullah, he has already captured it and organized it and structured it for us to pass it on to next generation. And there is a lot of murids to him. You mentioned Dr. Abdullah Rahman as one of his uh, students. Uh, which he is now one of the leaders of Islamic psychology today. Uh, and many of us who not even met him, we feel like we are his bodies as well. So we will inshallah keep his legacy alive and may all of these sessions be sadaqa jariya for him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him jinnat al firdaus I also want to thank my two colleagues, Sister Ani and Sister Fatima for helping me to structure this. So thank you so much, sisters. Now we're gonna go to the panel discussion and we have a, mashallah, a very distinguished panel. I will, I will present the panelists and after we will have a, a, a conversation, I will ask some questions and they will reflect then. And, and, and I hope that you all as participants will join to, uh, will enjoy to listen to, to Professor Badr Rahimullah's students perspective of him as a teacher, as a murabi, as a professor and also as a father figure. So let me introduce our distinguished panel. First, we have Professor Ibrahim Uzidani. He has a Bachelor in Industrial Organization Psychology in Algeria University. He has a Master in General Psychology, International Islamic University of Malaysia. He has a PhD in Organizational Behavior from Marmara University, the same university as Professor Darim. And he has been a student of Professor Malik Badri during his time in IIUM and assisting him for some of his work. In addition to that, he met him again in Turkey. Welcome, uh, Professor Ibrahim, mashallah. It's an honor having you with us. Let me also introduce Dr. Salami Olaguke. Sorry for my pronunciation, uh, doctor. I hope I pronounced right. He is from Nigeria originally. He took his first degree in the University of Ibadan. He completed his master's at the International Islamic University of Malaysia, where he met Professor Malik Betri, who taught him psychotherapy. He did his doctorate at University Pendid Khan, Sultan Idris, Malaysia, which is the head organizer of this session today. And he works there today as a senior lecturer. Uh, his speciali specialization includes clinical psychology, Islamic psychology, and positive psychology. MashaAllah, you're very welcome, Dr. Salam. It's an honor having you with us, such a distinguished background. We also have two very great ustadas. Uh, first, Ruslina Abdul Rahman from Malaysia, 
undergraduate degree in human science, majoring in psychology from International Islamic University, Malaysia. She took one subject with Professor Malik Badr, rahimahullah, where she found the beauty of psychology in Islam or when it comes to the spiritual and faith aspect. She's currently working as psychology officer and heading the career and counseling unit in Mara University of Technology for the Peak Branch campus. Her specialization in is personal development and career preparation. Besides doing counseling, coaching, organizing programs for students and staff at UITM. So you're much welcome to this uh, panel. Such a distinguished background. It's an honor having you with us, Ustada Roslina. And last but not least, we have Ustada Ami Martadila, PhD, doctorate in industrial and organization, organizational psychology, completed her undergraduate, undergraduate, postgraduate, and doctoral programs at the psychology faculty of International Islamic University, Malaysia. Professor Malik Bedri has taught her Islam and psychology as well as clinical psychology course during her undergraduate time. She's a lecturer in psychology faculty of Mersubauna University, Jakarta. And she's also working as a consultant. So very welcome, Sister Ami, mashallah, such a distinguished background. It's an honor having you as part of this distinguished panel. So feel free now to open up your microphones, dear panelists, so we can have a fruitful discussion, inshallah, and to hear you all speak a little bit about your, your um, perspectives and your encounterings and what you gained from the interaction with our dear Murabi, Professor Badri, rahimatullah. So feel free to start. I will let Professor uh, Ibrahim start just to speak. And please feel free to have a very open discussion. You know each other very well. And I will come with some of the questions while you're discussing. So welcome, Professor Ibrahim. Tell me a little bit about your uh, perceptions of Professor Badri and what you learned from him. His pedagogy, everybody speaks about his pedagogy. He was very inclusive. Professor Darin and also Professor Rahmatullah Khan spoke about, you know, he is like a father figure. He always took time for all of his students. He was traveling all the time. He was a globe charter. He always found time. And also Professor Darin was speaking about he was emanating. He was, he was a reflection of the prophetic adab and akhlaq, mashallah. Could you tell us a little bit about that, Professor Ibrahim? Welcome. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Sayyid, for this uh, program and for all those who contribute for this program to, to happen. Uh, my thanks also goes to uh, Professor Khan and uh, Professor Suleiman for their uh, wonderful uh, talk and speech. So when I come to uh, uh, my experience with uh, Professor Malik Badri, rahimahullah, I have uh, like uh, noticed some very distinguished characteristics. So it makes me really uh, find a difference between him and between other professors or people that I have met in my uh, career and in my studies. One uh, point is that Prof. Malik Badri, when he talks about the Islamization of knowledge, he never tried to make himself as the father of the idea. He was like just having an idea and working for it. And he never tried to uh, uh, try to make himself as the one who's working for it only, and he's the one who invent or initiate this idea. And all the time he was letting people think that this 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 aim or this uh, let's say this idea it's the the work of previous scholars. And all the time he was telling us that. The, the idea of Islamization of knowledge, it started with Malik, with the, the, the Sheikh Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, and especially in his book, uh, Al-Munqid min al-Dalal. And he was trying to let us understand the system that uh, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali used when he was dealing with the Western uh, philosophy and the way that he worked on it and how he could derive the, the benefits from it, and he, as uh, Prof. Suleiman was saying, it was like trying to take the cough from, from the philosophy and just take the, the benefit of it. And many ideas has been taken from that uh, book, particularly the Al-Munqid min al-Dalal. And uh, when he was dividing like the, 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 the psychology in three parts, uh, he said, some part of psychology is wajib to learn it. And 
one part is makruh and one, uh, one part is mubah. It was like making like ahkam uh, of on the, the psychological perspective, how we can just like benefit from some part of psychology and just like through some uh, other parts. And it was dealing like professionally and creatively with uh, the Western psychology. So that's the ethical things that uh, we learned from Malik Badri. You never try to make yourself as the, 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 the only person who knows about the idea. But when you have an idea, let other people feel it's their own. We share it. We are all working on that aim. That's one, we can say it's a style of leadership in academic way, or we can say it's an ethical uh, or akhlaq uh, manner that can help any person to reach his aim. The other point is also uh, the intensive reading. Prof. Malik rahimahullah was reading a lot, not only in psychology, but he was like reading everything that he uh, it comes to, to his hands. So he was like an encyclopedic person. He was having knowledge in different perspectives, in psychology, in sociology, in different fields. Sometimes when we used to study, for example, some lessons we were studying about, uh, for example, uh, the psychoanalysis, he was using physics to explain for us the dynamic of this theory and how it comes and from where they took the idea. So it was wonderful. You don't feel that you are studying psychology. Sometimes I remember I was crying. Who can cry where he's studying psychology? Because he was like so spiritual. He was so giving the ideas, the, the lessons with like a spirit. You feel that there is something different. And this, uh, one of his uh, characteristics, he can make a spirit, an Islamic spirit within this human sciences. He doesn't give it to you as like uh, dry science, but he was giving spirit for this science. It's also one wonderful character that Prof. Malik was having. And then another point is, the uh, uh, Prof. Malik rahimahullah was like uh, very uh, affirmative action. He has like very positive actions. Whenever a new idea or a new problem raise, Prof. Malik all the time he tried to learn about it and try to understand it and try to write about it and let people understand the issue, the homosexuality, the AIDS. Prof. Malik. He, all of these problems, sometimes it's related with the neurology or with the medicine, some fields, but he tried to understand it and give the idea from an Islamic psychological perspective. He was like so active. He's, as the Prof. Rahmatullah was saying, never give up. True, Prof. Malik, he was like working intensively, reading intensively and working intensively also. And he tried to give uh, explanation for all types of issues and problems and try people to understand it from an Islamic perspective, even if the issue is very complicated. And uh, another point, and I will make it the last one, it's his academic effectiveness. One day, I remember we were in the classroom and the Prof Malik asked us, he said, why until now, the Islamization of knowledge didn't get that benefit we want, that didn't reach the level that we want. So as student, we start giving, mashallah, different answers. Then he was smiling with his beautiful smile. The Prof Malik, you know, is listening, listening to you is just like giving you a smile. It's making sadaqah, whether it, even in the classroom. So. so when we finished all the answers and they were just like smiling, he said in the end, we didn't, reach our aim because of our laziness. We are lazy. He was very uh, trying to push us to work hardly and intensively. A broth manic, he knows that the problem is our effectiveness. Muslims sometimes, they have the idea, they have everything. Now we have, mashallah, different universities, we have resources, we have people who like this subject, but we didn't, I mean, make some uh, uh, like let's say a very uh, precise work. Now psychology, we are just talking about Islamization of psychology in the field of uh, clinical psychology, but we still have different fields of psychology. What we are doing for other fields of psychology, 
we have also to enter this field so work. So we are just like, enter now, we are putting all our efforts with a clinical psychology in, I mean, uh, when we talk in general. So we need to have this effectiveness. We have to have that, that ability of working uh, intensively and continually, not just like, doing, writing one article, or two articles and we, we did our part and it's fine, we have to sit now. No, we have to work and work and try to make uh, our work like uh, 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 jointly I and mean, all of us trying to make conferences and also try to exchange the ideas regarding this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this project until inshallah we can reach the, the aim that uh, Prof. Malik was, uh, was targeting. Thank you so much. Just like this, is my contribution for uh, what I have learned from Prof. Malik Badri Rahimahullah. Thank you so much. MashaAllah, Professor Ibrahim. What a beneficial uh, knowledge you have received, MashaAllah. And also very interesting uh, reflections and contemplations regarding his pedagogy. Thank you so much, Professor Ibrahim. Very beneficial. And I liked also when you spoke about wajib and makru and, and mubah and how he uses this to to actually say that some of the Western psychology we can use and some we should not use. And he's taken that from the Imam Ghazali Rahimullah's methodology of when he studied the Western philosophy during his time at the and age. And mashallah, this is a very good uh, analogy to have with us. I want to pass it on to, uh, to Dr. Salami. Dr. Salami, um, tell us a little bit about uh, Professor uh, Badri Rahimullah's pedagogy. What was your uh, feelings of his pedagogical perspectives? And also feel free to share your reflections also generally. Uh, I, I really appreciate uh, your, your efforts so far bringing this program into reality. I, I give big thanks to our honorable professors and um, all participants, my dear colleagues. Uh, it's such a wonderful experience uh, getting to meet Professor Malik in IUM. Um, for, for an African student coming all the way from Nigeria to Malaysia and getting to meet a professor telling him about Sigma fraud and psychology from this Western perspective, but in the real sense of it, because in theory, we've been really loaded at the undergraduate level, all these theories and sigma fraud and that psychoanalysis, the humanistic, the behavioral, all these theories were, were, were already with us. But it's so amazing coming to Malaysia and hearing from our, our eminent professor, you know, giving us the idea that these theories are having this deficit. Islamic wise, this is, what we are supposed to understand is is such such amazing kind of knowledge. I never thought of it. I came here for my master's in clinical psychology, and I'm getting to learn Islamic perspective to the same psychology I've learned before. So even up till now, in most Nigerian, I don't know how many African countries curriculum, there is nothing like this as we speak, and um, is is such an amazing knowledge getting to learn all this from him at the master's level and continuing such kind of knowledge in my doctorate. I, I, I don't know how much I owe him. I, I continue praying for him. May Allah have mercy on his soul. May Allah bless his soul. And um, yeah, we just have to continue praying for him. And in terms of leaving his legacy, um, yeah, what we've learned is, is such a, a kind of an enormous knowledge in the in the in the platform where you know it shared so many things with us most especially when we look at our psychotherapy course because i'm more of like a clinical psychology so i i see things from this clinical perspective it, it made us to understand that his his approach is more of like getting to bring out the deficit from the western perspective to psychoanalysis in fact it made us to understand that Sigmund Freud himself is also a psycho, you know, he, he eventually committed suicide. And, and this one thing, yeah. Prof. Malik, he made reference to everything he taught us in class. 
He made reference to Anna Fraud. Anna Fraud also criticizing Sigmund Fraud, you know. He, he, he gave every details and gave us reference to read further about all these analysis, you know. And he asked us to go to the library. These books are in the IUM library. We have to go there and read and get to know the knowledge ourselves, all right? And um, in terms of his philosophy, I think he, Prof. Malik is somebody who has read so wide. You know, his, his reformist approach, his neo-renaissance approach to psychology, to, to mainstream psychology is more of like some of his readings from Muhammad Kutub and, you know, some of these reformist scholars, they, 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 they've given him the idea that yes, human knowledge is very, very limited when we look at it from the Western perspective. This is what our Islamic scholars have said. This is what they've been doing. As far back as the ninth century, he, he, he came up with the, 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 the theories and the analysis of Al-Balki. You know, the, the, the most striking book, just like what Professor Ramatula has presented to us, The Dilemmas of Muslim Psychologists, we, we cannot continue to, to, to go by that perspective. He made us very clear in class that look at the Western world, despite all the most prominent psychologists, despite all the most prominent psychotherapy approaches being used, we still get the number of suicide rates so high. Yeah. And suicide, I mean, statistic talking about depression, you know, everything still goes down to the records. And when you look down to the Arab Muslim countries, these statistics are very low. Why? It's nothing more than the spirituality. It's nothing more than the Islamic tenets, the Islamic principles. Why can't we go back to that? So it, it, it made us to understand that looking at the current scenario of things, we cannot continue to go by these approaches. We cannot continue to go by these principles laid down in virtually all the textbooks. He made reference to a certain number of textbooks written by some prominent scholars also. Uh, one of his major um, authors is um, Scott Peck, the, 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 the Road Less Traveled. He always refer back to that book, The Road Less Traveled by Scott Peck. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Scott Peck. That book is so enormous, is so rich in terms of, you know, how the Westerners can see spirituality into their into their lifestyle. Okay, this this scholar also, you know, is is, is a prominent scholar to Professor Malik, and he, he, he did share a lot. I, I cannot mention all of them. At, outside the realm of the normal psychology we know, Prof Malik also gave us the idea of the fact that. In the past, there have been a kind of research, some research work on the mind-body interaction. This is another, way, another area of specialization, another area of, uh, maybe I would call it psychosomatic or psychological and you know, physiological perspective to Islamic you know, psychology or something. It made us to understand the theory of the placebo, yeah. something that has to do with the mind-body interaction. That you know, he, he gave a reference to a particular patient of his he met in Sudan about a, a, a concept called pseudo pregnancy. You know, a, a concept where this woman was pregnant. I mean, this woman wasn't pregnant, but for the fact that she has been looking for a child all along in her marriage life, she 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 was having that you know, conviction that she's actually pregnant, okay? This pseudo pregnancy thing. And all of a sudden she started developing the symptoms of pregnancy. She started, you know, passing out, I mean, vomiting and, you know, going to see the doctors. And eventually when the test was done, after about six months of this so-called pregnancy, she was, you know, virtually made to understand that she's not pregnant. Even though her tummy, her tummy was getting bigger. So this was a real life patient, which she knows very well. The, the, the patient was asked to see him. And it was, it was obvious that the mind can actually have an effect on the body. All right? And it, 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 it did open this perspective to us. And it, it made reference to a particular book. Uh, I've, forgotten, I've forgotten this book. 
I've forgotten. He, he asked us to make a photocopy. We don't really have the book. We had a photocopy at the time. And some researches have been done on this before, back in the 1960s. So it, it, it made us like, we need to open up our mind. We need to open up our horizon into, you know, how can we explore the, the human psyche, you know? Aside, aside the cognitive, the emotional, and the behavioral inter interplay in human functioning, we, we, we also need to look at the, the spirituality aspect of our functioning and how well can we adopt, you know, can we help patients, can we help clients or whoever is having a problem to, to have a kind of a holistic approach in resolving some of these, some of these problems. And, um, yeah, Professor Malik has actually made it so clear to us. Part of it again, he was he was made he was mentioning this in one of his videos. Uh, I in fact recently I saw the videos online where as a Muslim, if you pray for someone, possibly maybe in the Tajud or something, and you made a prayer for someone, and without telling the person that you are praying for him or her, you know, that, that's such a very very good spiritual activity to do for someone you know, for someone you like, and the person is having a problem and you are praying for this person uh, in his absence. You are praying without him even knowing. You are, you are, you are, you are in your tajud and you are praying for someone to, 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 to have a better life. To, you are praying for someone to get healed from a sickness or something. He confirmed that based on certain research, I, I, I've forgotten the reference to this research, those people who does that feel more happier than people who doesn't pray for others. You know, how can we establish this? This is something spiritual in nature. And um, yeah, there, there are so many areas we can go into in terms of exploring, you know, Islamic psychological research. And I, I, I guess um, our, our meeting today, our, our sharing session today is, is another avenue for us to look at all these, all these, um, issues, all these research areas, and some of these ideas we've learned, we've been reading about Professor Malik. We, we, we can come together again at another session and see how well we can collaborate. And inshallah, I guess we can, we can do more than what we are doing now. I, I believe, I think I, I need to stop here. Thank you for having me. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Salami. Mashallah, so many gems, so many SubhanAllah, so many great reflections. I was catch, trying to catch all of it, you know. Uh, his interdisciplinary approach, you mentioned Professor Badr Rahimullah's interdisciplinary approach, that he was very well educated in the Western psychology as well. So he knew about it. It was not just that he read some articles, he really studied it thoroughly, which is very important when you work as a scholar, you know, to have yeah. even those um, ideologies and philosophies and psychologies, which is not from your narrative, from your background, from your paradigm, uh, or inclined totally with your Islamic epistemology, he still knew them. So he could really dissect them. He also mentioned that he spoke about the human knowledge is very, very limited from the Western psychological perspective, which is also something we feel that the Western psychology is very reductionistic. You mentioned that uh, the Western psychology only speaks about mind and body, not the soul. Now we have the third wave um, uh, CBT, which also Professor Rahmatullah Khan was speaking about, that's something that is coming now with a little bit from you know mindfulness and the Buddhistic tradition. Yet it's still not in the center of it, which is uh, the case for our psychology and the Islamic psychology. He also mentioned um, Al Balkhi, uh, and also I think for all of us who learned about Al Balkhi from his translation. Uh, this is a very da great dawah tool. I uh, heard from um, Dr. Fatima Abdullah, which is the, the wife of Professor Badr Rahimullah, that actually they have translated it to Norwegian, and that it is a professor in Norway who is not Muslim, who is actually also big, um, has big interest of uh, al balkhi Rahimullah. So this is a great dawah tool. MashaAllah, holistic, you spoke about holistic. So I wanted to, uh, Ustara Roslina, uh, just to hear your reflection regarding all the things that both Professor Ibrahim and Dr. Salami and also our distinguished professors, Rahmatullah Khan and Professor Suleiman, Darin, what is your perspective when you hear the words holistic, his teaching methods, 
he knew a lot, he studied a lot, he told you to go to the library and study, you know. This is also an integral part of our deen, you know, as Muslims to study. What is your perceptions of all of these great things? Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes. Okay. So thank you, um, Ustaz Jamaluddin, and thank you for... Um, the, uh, Prof Rahmatullah, Prof Sulaiman for the beautiful information as well as Dr. Salami and Dr. Ibrahim. Okay, from what I hear, because basically I'm I'm not uh, among the scholars. Uh, yeah, I'm just a practi uh, practitioner in psychology. I work as a psychology officer since uh, 22 years ago. So from what I heard uh, about all the talks uh, just now, what I can conclude that, and it's also I felt that Prof Malik is someone who not only master the theoretical knowledge, but also the practical knowledge uh, for Islamic psychology. And this practical knowledge is very important in uh, my field of work as practitioner, um, where we met many clients um, every day and where we have to treat them for their uh, mental health issues. So the, the, the holistic view, the, the inclusion of soul, the inclusion of spirituality in treating the, the clients is very important because what, uh, what I um, experienced this past 20, 22 years is that most of the clients that come to us, they a week in Seoul. So part of the treatment that needs to be taken into consideration is uh, strengthening their soul first so that they, they can uh, work better when we, we work with their mind and body to overcome their mental health. Because without the soul, without the spirituality, uh, spirituality aspect, without the faith, they wouldn't have the resilience to improve themselves, to, to get better from their, their mental issues. Um, and as all speakers said just now, that Prof Mali is very humble, very uh, well read, as well as he he's very uh, helpful and approachable. I remember that uh, when I was doing uh, my subject with him way back in 2008, he gave me a topic to work for my assignment, which, he, which was um, uh, drawing a house tree and house tree and people drawing. And when I tried after two weeks, I cannot do that because it's um, not my, I don't know anything about uh, the, the art and drawing, yeah, that time. And when I was doing my psychology and the undergraduate psychology uh, way back in 1994 up to 1998, my focus uh, that time was on personnel and uh, industrial psychology. So I don't have many knowledge on counseling, uh, many knowledge on clinical psychology. So when I met him, he's very open-minded um, and he, he gave me the way out because um, I said that I cannot do the, sub, uh, the, the topic that he gave me, but I suggested that I want to do on uh, those uh, unfortunate people with some disabilities uh, for the subject. And uh, he also tell me, told me what, what, to, what to look for the new topic that I choose. And uh, the, the way he helped me somehow uh, becomes uh, my, what we call it, it's my, become my, 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 my approach also to my clients, uh, my students, because I also teach uh, certain subjects here. Yeah. And actually, Prof Malik for me is very, uh, fatherly figure, yeah, is very humble, very helpful, very approachable, which in dealing with clients, that's one of the main uh, main characters, main aspects of the counselors that need to be 
to be present uh, because we want to help uh, those people who are unfortunate enough to have these mental issues or any uh, one day, uh, the, uh, any life, day to day life issues. So, what I can conclude that the teaching of Prof. Mali in Islamic psychology is very, actually, it's very far fetched, it's very visionary uh, because. He talked about the spirituality aspect, about the soul aspect way back before the Western uh, scholars started talking about spirituality. Meaning that uh, based on his uh, conviction in Islam, Islamic teaching, based on his reading, he knows that this aspect of soul is very important. It's part of our life, which we cannot forget when we are, we, we are dealing with people, when we are treating people. So he's very, very visionary people. And I know that his work is being uh, all over the world. It's being, he's been working very hard since uh, 1955, if I'm not mistaken, to promote the Islamic psychology where the, the inclusion of soul in psychology as uh, in psychotherapy. Okay. okay, I think I think that's all from me for the time being. Jazakallah khairan, Ustada Roslina, mashallah. Thank you. Very, very great, great reflections and also sharing your experience of him as a teacher, as a pedagogue, as a uh, as a father figure, as as a visionary. Yeah. You spoke yeah. about him being a visionary and Alhamdulillah, you know, a lot of visionaries, they never achieved their visions, but he achieved his vision. So he's both yes. the visionary, but he also implemented his vision, which yes. is not always easy. You know, we can always strive to have a vision, but to implement it and have that force and that dedication to implement it, that is also something that is very admirable. We are all, in a sense, here gathering today as both scholars and students, such as myself and participants, due to his vision that he implemented. So that's why we are very honored to organize this session because we also have the responsibility to keep going and implementing more visions and keep going to keep his legacy alive and not to take it for granted. Because there is a yeah. lot of forces in, in dunya who doesn't want us to um, normalize the field of Islamic psychology. So we should not take it for granted. So he was working even in his old age you said he started 1955, mashallah. <laughs> That's a long time, mashallah. You know, you get so impressed and you get you admire him, like the, the, the tenacity, you know, to work for so many years and always to rediscover new ways of working with the field and also to work around the world. He has one place in Turkey, one in, 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 in Malaysia, one in Sudan, one in UK. Mashallah. That's very admirable. So Jazakallah khairan. So let's go to Sister Mr. Ami as Mr. our last Sayed. panelist. Sister Ami, uh, a lot of our uh, uh, panelists, uh, distinguished uh, professors, scholars, ustadas, and, uh, and doctors, they mentioned uh, a lot of things. What is your perception of your relationship and the general uh, view of Professor Babli from the student perspective? What have you learned? Welcome. All right, thank you, Brother Said. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with all of you, with my professor also, I've met Dr. Rahmatullah before, and I know all of us gather here with the same spirit, like what Brother Said said, that uh, we cannot take for granted. We need to uh, we need to work more and continue the, the spirit that Prof. Malik Badri already shared with us. So uh, I was a student of Prof. Malik Badri back on 2002, 2003 until 2006, I'm doing my undergraduate. I have no idea about the Islam in psychology. I'm just taking my degree in psychology. I used to sit in front and to take notes during the class. And you know, when I took my Islam in psychology subject, it, I was so impressed during Prof. Malik Badri class. I never take notes. Why? Because everything what he say, his gesture and uh, to our class, it's like, you know, it's like, you, you, you don't you don't realize that the time is passing why because he teach using all of his expression dem demonstrate that stimulate that and he he always said that uh, yes my daughter you know he address 
his students very well and he now I'm a lecturer It's uh, my homework to make the class as interesting as the way he make it during back and that time and this, this is how I see him as a lecturer you know uh, when he he teach about the Islam and psychology I remember that he said that uh, so now I'll ask you uh, yeah how many western theory that you know very well in compared to the Muslim scholars work Agree with me, you know so many theory in Western. Maybe you can type in the chat column. Yes, 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 yes. Or you 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 know how many Muslim scholars that you know about the psychologist who work very well. Yeah, maybe we know about yeah, we know about the uh the, the Suleiman, positive psychology, we know the, the theory of uh, behaviorism and so many theory. That's that's why Prof. Malik Badi always saying that my daughter, my son, it's your homework. Don't go to the lizard hall. It's your you can take the Western theory, but take what is good from that, but as a Muslim scholar, as a Muslim, you need to learn. It's your homework to 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 to, to take a uh, Quran and Sunnah. There is no dispute and that, and uh, use it as a remedy for the psychology and and mental health problem. So based on that, uh, what 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 he's saying, uh, in my work later on, although I'm, I'm working in industrial and organized psychology, I always remember what he said, always put in Islamic perspective, always question about work engagement. Okay, how, how I can uh, help uh, employee to have a right motivation to work, how to find the meaningful work, how to have spirituality at the workplace. This is actually uh, based on Prof Malik reminder. So I think, uh, and also I was working in the one of the NGO in Indonesia, Maybe maybe you can, some of you from Indonesia and from Malaysia, we can go through. Uh, when I working in, in this NGO, we are, we are helping the young children to, 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 to uh, pre, uh, help themselves uh, from the pornograph pornographic addiction and game addiction. And Prof. Malik Badri conduct a lecture on that, three days lecture, and he explained that yeah, how we can treat the addiction. There are several causes of the addiction and there are several intervention also that we can help. Uh, the detail is, um, the, the good idea is that lack of uh, uh, good interaction in the family, lack of happiness, lack of joy in the family itself can create the addiction. So uh, people, yeah, maybe you have the, the, the problem, you have the problem with the, um, uh, the neurosis problem you have the social phobia you have the uh, phobia with the woman and uh, you have the some uh, uh, neurosis problem but sometimes we are normal people because we just get exposed to something that very bad we don't we don't prevent ourselves then we can get to the addiction that's why some of the therapy that prof malik said in his lecture is that we need to uh, we need to 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 uh, to do a zikir, to do a dua, to do the uh, our religious, uh, our uh, our spirituality routine, and and this is the homework I think for the scholars and for for all of us. We know that uh, Islam provides a good solution, but we need to put into writing. If we do the therapy on uh, zikir morning and afternoon zikir, we form that in one month how it affect your well being after 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 three months doing that pre and post test something like that. I think this is the homework for us as a future psychologist and to prove it to the Western people, some of the Islamic therapy, uh, some of the Islamic way of uh, solving the mental health is uh, also empirically test and found that significant result. I think Prof. Sulaiman uh, having so many things on the um, uh, self-love and something like that, right? Maybe we, it is our homework to, to be, to, to, to work more like Prof. Malik Badri said and, uh, and put it into writing. And for me, me, uh, frankly speaking, I'm still reading the McGraw Hill books and all the Western books and still lack of knowledge in, in, in reading Al-Kitab like Prof. Malik Badri. That's why we need something like this. So uh, Brother said, we need the community. We need the spirit. So we need to, to change the knowledge. We need the, 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 the atmosphere, the vibe that's, that remind us to continue working and to take the Western uh, theory as good, uh, to take the good and to 
put and uh, to put and to learn more what we have in uh, Al Quran and Sunnah and do it in Islamic way. So I think uh, that's from me, Bro Said. So I look forward to have this community as the uh, as the tools for us to move forward and to bring uh, more and to contribute to the Muslim Ummah and the, and then the society as general. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair. What a great nasiha. MashaAllah, Sister uh, Ustara Ami, I should say. And yes, I believe in the community work. I believe that we should be a movement. We should be a force of good. Uh, we should uh, really use the tool as dawah, which is something that you all have mentioned, dear panelists and dear distinguished scholars and professors and doctors and ustadas and ustads. And uh, I'm, I actually want to uh, emphasize that Look at the NGO that Sister uh, Ustad Ami has put, very interesting. I will try to translate it. I don't know Indonesian yet, but I will learn, inshallah. And also, uh, we have uh, the ISIP, International Students of Islamic Psychology, are all more than welcome to join us. We're uh, right now, a lot of things are going on. We're creating a web page. And please, uh, so we will give you more information. You're more than welcome to join. We will organize <clears throat> and do a lot of things to normalize the field of Islamic psychology both in Muslim countries and non-Muslim countries. And we have a WhatsApp group. I put the link in the chat. So if you're not uh, a member of the WhatsApp group, you're more than welcome to join. It will be our honor and pleasure if you wish to join. And just, I will let Professor Ibrahim come in because he has raised his hands, just to tell you one thing that it caught my eye. We cannot take it for granted that Sister Ustada Ami spoke about the lizard hole. And actually the lizard hole is the article that uh, Professor Vedri, Rahimullah, he wrote many years ago, but it's also connected to a hadith of the Prophet So, uh, you know, I spoke with a sister, she, she is in Egypt. And she told me something that is very interest, interesting and intriguing. She told me, you know what, uh, Brother uh, Sayyid Jamaluddin, we uh, don't even teach, uh, we cannot learn Islamic psychology in the universities in Egypt. And this is something that also know my, my colleague and great friend, Brother Zubi, told me about Algeria. I know that Professor Ibrahim is also from Algeria originally. That is still there, they don't teach Islamic psychology. It's more the psychoanalytic school, you know, because of the French, you know, the French colonialized Algeria there. So we're still colonialized in a sense. Uh, it's a new colonial era still. It's not even a post-colonial era. And uh, as Professor Skinner says, which is a distinguished Islamic psychology scholar from UK, that we still colonialize in our minds. So we need to decolonize ourselves to, in order to understand the greatness of our tradition when it comes to Ibn al nafs and Islamic psychology. And also that it's so intriguing that sometimes it's even easier to study Islamic psychology in West, which is not Muslim countries, than in some of our Muslim countries. Uh, and I was very intrigued. Uh, and to be frank, I was shocked because I really thought that uh, this is not the case. But now when we are connecting in the international community, we see that even in Muslim countries, it's not that easy. Uh, they don't see, you know, they say, okay, science is the Western, that is science, and our things are not science. Our Islamic tradition is not science, which is, of course, not the case. So we need to work in both societies, both in Muslim and non-Muslim. So we have, have that in mind. Uh, I will let Professor Ibrahim come with his question, and then we will invite the, the participant to ask the questions as Q&A. And we already received some questions in the chat. So welcome, Professor Ibrahim, you raise your hand. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Sayyid. Just like I want to share with you, uh, uh, actually, Pro Dr. Salami was sharing so many ideas from a book that Prof. Malik advised us to read. Uh, the Timeless Healing, the Power of the Power and the Biology of Belief. And here, if you can see, this is the handwriting of Prof. Malik. He was uh, taking uh, the, 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 the crucial ideas from that book. So uh, it's a wonderful book. And it's uh, like bringing this the idea of placebo and how these spiritual things can help. And the writer of this book is actually a doctor. It's not a psychologist. And he was sharing his experiences. And Prof. Malik was like uh, using it in uh, some of his uh, courses. Uh, that's the idea that I just want to share with uh, my brothers here. Thank you so much. MashaAllah. Jazakallah khair, Professor Ibrahim. Wow, the notes were... You know, I'm doing notes myself, so, <laughs> you know, it's interesting, you know, sometimes, you know, just want to do the notes, alhamdulillah. It's always inspiring to actually read our scholars' notes. Uh, it is, it should be part of the biography, inshallah, and we also have, actually, right now, is two biographies, as I know about Professor Badri that is under the making. One is 
from um, dear Dr. Ramadan from Turkey, who has interviewed him several times, is writing a, a, a biography, and also Dr. Abdullah Brahman, the head of the IAIP, uh, International Association of Islamic Psychology, he also mentioned to me that there is some um, biographies going on. So, inshallah, when these are um, released, we will also enjoy it. And uh, yeah, why not also show the uh, notes? That's very interesting, mashallah. Jazakallah khairan. So we let now the, the participants welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We had a lot of participants. And so there is some questions. I will ask now the distinguished panel and professors, of course. Uh, and if you want, you can raise your hand and you can also use the microphone and unmute yourself. So I start by taking some of the questions from the chat. And then if somebody wants, you're more than welcome to unmute your microphone and, and ask your question directly. Jazakallah khairan. So we start with uh, Um Rayan is asking, may we have details on how to get the book, please? So the book is the one, the, the latest book that you wrote about the psychology of the prophets. Uh, where, where can we buy it? Where can we have the links? Do you know anything, your panelists? And... Maybe I can say something. This book yes, is yes, by Sabat Zaim University in Arabic version, but also I heard that Triple IT is uh, translating it into English. Maybe okay. grabbing an English copy might be easier for English speakers. For Arabic speakers, if you enter Sabah and Zaim University, uh, maybe, you know, internet site, or also later I can help. I don't know right now which part of the book was, which part of the university they published it. So soon I can give some information soon. Inshallah. We will put it and in also, our WhatsApp group as well. So we will share that information. Also, I think, uh, uh, Sayyid, I think she can get it, get all his books from the Triple IT. Triple IT, yes. yes all the books that he, he wrote, yes. I think he get from there. We actually uh, will put the link of Triple IT also in the chat. If I can get help from my dear colleagues, uh, Sister Ani or Sister Fatima, just put the link of Triple IT. They have a wonderful a free resource uh, library where you can download the digital books and some of the works of uh, Professor Badr Rahimullah is there. So thank you so much for the Nasiya. And when the book is, uh, we will also post it in the WhatsApp, inshallah. So Triple IT is the very good source. If you want to have more access to Islamic uh, thought and uh, knowledge, Triple IT is one of the best institutes. So I really, um, I really recommend all of you to, to follow their page and to download the works. Jazakallah khairan. Let's go to next question. So uh, Brother Nuruddin uh, has two questions, one to Professor Rahmatullah Khan and one to Professor Suleiman Dari. So we start with the uh, question to you, uh, Professor Rahmatullah Khan. Uh, he says, in the book Contemplation, Professor Malik Badri rahimullah, tries to distinguish between the Islamic therapy model and the Eastern spirituality model, which he thinks tends to be irrational. Can you explain further from your reading of Professor Badri's work and also your experiences in interacting with him, what efforts have, uh, that have been made by Professor Badri rahimullah, to develop the Islamic psychology without co copying the Eastern spiritual model? Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Brother Nuruddin, uh, from what I know, actually, uh, whenever you follow what Prof. Malik uh, in his uh, discussion or lectures or whatever it is, he actually brings from the tradition of the Prophet and the, uh, you know, uh, from the Quran and from the tradition of the Prophet. Uh, uh, in, in fact, if you look at his own, uh, what you call, uh, behavior, you know, uh, he himself the contemplates, he himself do the zikr, he himself, you know, uh, so this is actually part of our, our uh, what you call uh, behavior as Muslims. You see, so uh, this contemplation or the spirituality that, that the Western world are talking about is nothing new to, to Muslim, to Islam. You see, so as Muslims, we have to, uh, we have to do that. In fact, if you read, I think in the in the book the contemplation, if you read in the book, it is mentioned there that uh, I think for a Muslim, if you want to raise your level, you have to do this thing. You have to uh, what you call uh, 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 practice this uh, 
contemplation. In fact, we are asked to do that. You know, in our in our solah, uh, isn't it? After the solah, we are asked to do zikir. We follow the prophet. And when you are doing the zikr, is what you are contemplating about the powers of Allah. Uh, you know the the what you call the uh, what whatever Allah has given to you. Uh, you thanks to Allah. You know these are actually uh, it has been there. So without the Western uh, tradition, we can uh, what you call you know improve ourselves, isn't it? In fact, I think he gave in the book. Uh, maybe we have to. You have to read the book again. Uh, it's not too thick. The book actually. Um, there are a number of uh, instances whereby uh, um, he. I think he talked about some uh, um, someone you know having difficulty in their work and all that. And then when the time of the prayer comes, and then he go and pray. And then suddenly he found out. I think it was chemistry or something, you know, some uh, some uh, scholar doing ke chemistry uh, experiments. He got stuck with the with the you know with the formulation. Cannot do anything, you know. He stopped by. He stopped, and then uh, the time of the solah, and then he do the solah, and then at the end of the solah, when he was thinking, and then came the idea. Ah, uh, you see, that means uh, the he is sort of like. Uh, Allah make him think that way, isn't it? This are, I think I think we have all this kind of of uh, this kind of instances that that we uh, practice, but we may not realize that this is actually part of the uh, behavior that a Muslim should do. So that's why I don't think I don't believe that you know Prof Malik is copying the the you know uh, the Eastern uh, model. Eastern, uh, that the Buddhist model or whatever, because we we have, and our model is not actually uh, based on the the Eastern uh, uh, religions, you know, like Buddhism and all that. So, although uh, Buddhism may be uh, predates Islam, it? but we have our own uh, tradition, is it? So, uh, I I guess the uh, I don't know whether I have answered the the question. You know, and I, 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 you know, based on uh, what we have seen, uh, Prof. Malik in his uh, uh, discussion or in his lectures and all that, he always bring all this from the Islamic tradition, and it is uh, rooted there very strong. Uh, you know, we, uh, in fact, actually, uh, uh, when I think of it, uh, uh, now we are facing Ramadan. You see, like for example, in in Malay tradition. You have this, uh, they call it Tadarus, Tadarus Quran, you know, it's like a, a tradition of reading the Quran and trying to finish it for the whole month, mm. you see. It is good in a sense that if you know the, the language of the Quran, if you know, if you, you know what you are reading, you know, that is good. Uh, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of us Muslims here in Malaysia, when we read, we have to read the translation, then we know the answer. So it is actually, it's supposed to be tadabur, you know, where you read and you understand the meaning of the Quran. It is better than just reading and not uh, understanding it, you see. So that's why, although we have all these traditions in the Islamic, you know, the we have this tradition, but uh, most of uh, Muslims are not following this tradition. That's why they don't, they don't get, uh, although they are Muslim, but uh, you don't see the Islam uh, being uh, helping them to overcome the problems uh, because they are not practicing the true Islam. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's it maybe for me. I don't want to go too much. Sorry. Jazakallah khairan, Professor Rahmatullah Khan. No, please. It was very beneficial. Thank you so much. You were shedding great, great nasiha you were speaking about. The practices that is integral in our deen. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khairan. Thank you so much, Professor Rahmatullah Khan, that we have the opportunity to learn from you and your experience and your vast amount of knowledge. Uh, brother, uh, brother Nuruddin is also asking a question to you, Professor Suleiman Darin. So his question is like this. Sorry. In his various works, Professor Malik Badri Rahimullah feels that CBT is a Western psychological model that is closer to Islam than psychoanalysis, biopsychology, and behaviorism, for example. 
My question is whether Professor Malik Bedir Rahimullah during his life has also observed and criticized the position of feminist and LGBT movements that seek to modify CBT for the benefit of their movement. For example, stating that the condition of LGBT people is not the psychological problematic. Thank you. Thanks very much, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I think Ustaz Malik Petri was criticizing the Western psychology in his introduction to all his books. For example, when you read the contemplation, you know, you will see that he's criticizing both Eastern and the Western uh, you know, for example, he's criticizing that the West is making yoga, which is the Eastern tradition of contemplation or meditation, he calls it, as a kind of relaxing your body and, you know, emptying the mind. And says, Malik Patra says, you can never stop your brain. So some people in the East, they claim that they stop the brain. So they stop the thinking. So they relax. He says, uh, or brain or akal is like a meal, you see, you can put grain and you can ground it and you can make a nice bread. But if you put uh, sand or rocks into this meal, you won't get a nice bread, you see. So he's always criticizing uh, in his books, especially about homosexuality. Uh, I don't know whether people know about it. The AIDS crisis is a really, really very well researched book. In this book, uh, The AIDS Crisis, uh, you know, he is discussing. Uh, <coughs> in a very deep manner, referring all the Western resources. And he is even, uh, you know, uh, showing that how the Western scholars, some of these Western scholars, abuse the scientific facts. So as distorted the scientific facts, so as to legalize homosexuality. Even Scott Peck, I love Scott Peck very much, but I didn't know that he was uh, propagating homosexuality. His book, his book uh, The Road Last Frozen, or the last travel is really a nice book, but he is one of the uh, people who is pro propagating using biological, uh, you know, uh, data, but they are misusing it. So they are saying that uh, this disease is like a biological thing, so we should accept it as it is. It's very natural, you know. So I think uh, Mr. Malik Petri has a very uh, deep knowledge of Western psychology. He knows uh, all the traps of the Western psychology, how they are abusing these scientific facts, uh, you know, uh, distorting the scientific facts so as to make the secular psychology like a religion. I think we should read this AIDS crisis, uh, but I haven't seen many references to feminism in this book. Maybe feminism was not at a strong uh, tight in his time, especially in places where he lived. I'm not sure, maybe Brother Rahmatullah knows more about it. But as far as the homosexuality and also sexuality is concerned, I don't want to repeat here, especially this last book again, is uh, about the prophet psychology. He gives a very long uh, analysis of how Freud uh, made his sexual freedom in the West as a kind of new religion, because the Western uh, societies were fed up with the, uh, the church, uh, you know, uh, what you call it, uh, the church uh, pressure on them that sexuality is bad, you have to be you know, a monk or you have to be you know, a virgin, so as if you want to become. Also, he's speaking about his Inquisition court where they prosecute the shaitan. So he's really explaining the roots of all these uh, fallacies in the Western world. I think the introductions of all his books, he was that he, does, he never imitates in a culture, he brings pure original Islamic thought. Also, he makes a very thorough criticism of these uh, uh, false ideas about human nature, about homosexuality, about originals, and whatever you imagine. Actually, he gives uh, very deep information. Thank you. Jazakallah khair, Professor Suleiman Dini. Thank you for your very beneficial answer and uh, reflections. Uh, wonderful. Yeah, exactly. So I'm looking at the chat, you know, there is some just reflections, general reflections. I, Kehloud uh, Muflehi is writing, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Perhaps Islamic psychology thoughts, knowledge is general psychology with a certain culture, religious implementation to individuals that accommodates each way of teaching and comprehension. Comprehension, yes. And then uh, Sister Fatima is writing, Fatima Ahmad, uh, 
Thank you, Dr. Rahmatullah. We need to do that ourselves as Muslim, the dhikr, the contemplation. Can you share, if you know more about Professor Badri, Rahimullah's personal spiritual daily regime? Professor Rahmatullah, or even the students perhaps know, or you, Professor Suleiman. Professor Rahmatullah, do you, do you have any insights of that? Uh, actually, and unfortunately, uh, uh, the only thing that we, we, I guess, I guess one thing that is one thing we didn't, we didn't really ask him, you know, that so I didn't really personally ask him, uh, but he does has a, 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 what you call, uh, when we do pray uh, in the mosque, at, at the IUM mosque, uh, we notice that he does has, uh, you know, the, uh, the zikir that he does do. And I think you all uh, possibly um, have known that he always has his tasbih with him. He carries his tasbih uh, all the time. He uh, he does that. So um, I think uh, other than that, I don't I don't uh, exactly know you know the details, uh, the real details. Maybe Rob Sulaiman might know. Uh, I heard from uh, his wife. He was a very spiritual person. He will always do a lot of zikir before he go to bed every day without uh, you know uh, putting any delay. And also when people ask him about his this power, you know he's mashallah in his very old days so active, more than me personally. So they would ask him what is your power comes from. He would uh, show his subha. This is my uh, power. I took uh, also when you look at his uh, books, he always talks about the test to nafs. He refers to Imam Ghazali. So when he read, the, for example, Tefekkur, he really uh, uses Tefekkur like uh, as a spiritual ibadah, you see. It's a worship, but it's an intellectual worship, which we ignore, unfortunately, today. He also thinks that why we have problems in the Islamic world today, like this Daesh, this Islamic Khilaf state, chopping off heads, because these people have no love. When I told him about my uh, PhD thesis, that it is the divine love, he told me, oh, this is what we really need. We need love, you see, among Muslims today. We don't need hate. We don't need this, you know, uh, I don't know, this uh, terrorism and every, all this stuff. I think uh, he was a very spiritual, contemplative person because when uh, we listen like this Kitab al-Tafakur of Ghazali from him, you really enter into this spiritual atmosphere, you see. It's not like the, the animals, have, are coming with us with the first grade of contemplation. Because if an animal see an apple, an animal, animal want to eat it, you see. Maybe the kufar have also in the second level, they are equal to us. They see the beauty of an apple, they say, mashallah, very good apple. They don't say mashallah, of course, but a good nature. Maybe nature created this apple. He said the third and fourth level of contemplation uh, is for Muslims. We look at apple and we See the beauty of Allah's power and creation, hikmah and you know ibda after it. So really, uh, you can't write this book if you are not a spiritual person. You can't write a book on contemplation if you are an ordinary person. If you just spend your life eat and drink and uh, entertainment, I think uh, all his books, also his personal life, like a prophet example. Uh, you know, so much modesty. I have never seen such a successful worldwide person. I mean, imagine uh, this, you know, uh, Malcolm X. He was the most famous person in Islamic world today. He was among those people who converted him into true Islam. As you know, he was believing in this Elijah Muhammad. He was believing in this uh, nonsense that there is a prophet after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was converting this uh, great man into real Islam even giving his name Malik as Malik Shahbaz to Malcolm X. But you see, so modest person, anyone could jump into his room and talk to him for hours. Never stop you like a Prophet always giving his time to his Sahaba. Therefore, I think, uh, of course, we don't know the details of his, uh, uh, you know, how he was prayed in the middle of night. We, 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 I didn't have the courage to ask him, actually. I was always wanted to ask him, but I was you know, ashamed to ask him, you know, how much do you pray in the middle of night? They are a little personal, you see. But my observation was, he was really spiritual, uh, praying and making zikir and teskir to nafs. And we see all these traces in his books.
Thank you. MashaAllah, Professor Suleiman Darin. Jazakallah khairan. And I actually came across the story about Malcolm X, Rahimullah. Uh, as you say, Malcolm X is an inspirational source for so many Muslims and also non-Muslims all around the world. And that he came, he got his name, uh, like he was inspired by Professor Malik Bendi. I actually, I think it was Allahu Alam. Somebody said that maybe it was Imam Umar Suleiman. I read some notes or... Uh, I, I, I was very intrigued, you know, because, you know, we all, you know, read the, the biography of Professor uh, or Imam uh, Malcolm X, Rahimullah, and, and we were so intrigued and inspired. And when he went to Hajj, he met in Sudan, I think. He was doing a tour in African countries, in North Africa, West Africa, Central Africa. So he went to Sudan and he met Professor Badr, Rahimullah, mashallah. What amazing meeting. I would love to have a picture of these two meeting and speaking together, mashallah. That would be very inspiring. So we are over time, dear panelists and dear distinguished professors. I will just uh, briefly, Professor Ibrahim raised his hand. So briefly just bring in, I'm so sorry we're over the time, but you know, we're all so passionate that you all have shared so many great uh, stories and Asiya, may Allah bless each and every one of you and the participants are very content. So la last, uh, last uh, reflections from Professor Ibrahim, welcome. Uh, sorry, just like uh, in addition to what uh, Prof, uh, Rahmatullah Khan and Prof. Suleiman said about uh, the type of, uh, let's say, life of Prof. Malik, Rahimahullah. It's true, you know, uh, as uh, his wife, Ms. Dr. Fatma, was saying regarding his adhkar and reading Quran before he sleep. Even if he's tired, he has so much work, he, whatsoever, his dhikr and his qira'at uh, al-Quran before sleeping, it was like a must. And another thing that I was completing on is uh, his, uh, let's say, assisting people, helping people. That was, was like a key thing in his life. When anyone asked him about anything, he would never hesitate to help. Uh, whether using his money, using his, uh, let's say, con uh, social connections. So this one, this character, I think we miss it sometimes. Uh, in our uh, academicians and scholars. I mean, using your power, using everything to help other people. That's one, I, I, myself, he helped me to find the work when I was, I, I, I was in need, when I was in master, my, doing my master degree, he helped me to find the job. I went to him, so he just like uh, called his friend and he sent me to one office and I just find the job, alhamdulillah, I could live and survive and finish my master because of him. And I know many people, Many people, uh, they been uh, has been be helped by uh, Prof Malik just like me, and Allah alam. Jazakumullah. <laughs> Jazakallah khaira, Professor Ibrahim. Mashallah, he has helped so many people. I've been in so many tribute sessions, which where they have, all have mentioned their uh, special relationship to dear Professor Badrakumullah. Thank you, Professor Ibrahim. I will now thank all of our panelists. Please, uh, please round of digital applause. Use your digital. Uh, reaction, uh, reaction to, to give a round of applause. Let me also give a round of applause, please. So I do a round of applause. I want to thank all of our distinguished guests. MashaAllah, thank you for taking your time. I want a round of applause to Professor Rahmatullah Khan, to Professor Suleiman Darin, to Professor Ibrahim Huzidani, to Dr. Salami Ola Goke, to uh, Ustara Ruslina Abdul Rahman, and uh, also to Sister Ami. Mardatullah. So a round of applause to all of them. Also a round of applause to my dear colleagues who have assisted me, Sister Fatima, Sister Annie. Thank you so much for organizing, inviting people to join. And uh, I also want to thank all the uh, organizers. Uh, I want to thank, uh, especially the, you know, Dr. Salami and Professor Ibrahim for organizing the idea and everything. University of Khan, Sultan Idris, Malaysia, along with ISIP, International Students of Islamic Psychology. Uh, there is a lot of more reflections in the chat. So we will keep these reflections alive. Please join our WhatsApp group where we can discuss more when it comes to Islamic psychology. I put the link in the chat. I will do it again. And also uh, uh, look at Triple IT's webpage for the books uh, of uh, Professor Badri. And we will also share any links for, new, uh, for the new book in the WhatsApp groups. Uh, thank you so much to all our dear participants. Let us give a round of applause to the uh, participants as well. I will give a round of applause. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for participating. Thank you for, for wanting to know more about Islamic psychology. 
you want to be part of the movement, you want to spread and normalize the field of Islamic psychology. We have people here from all parts of the Ummah. We have clinicians, practitioners, scholars, and students, and you're all so much important. And what we can take with us is that we need to have an interdisciplinary approach when it comes to normalize the field of Islamic psychology and to use Islamic psychology as da'wah, because that is what Professor Badr Rahimullah did. And also Professor Dari mentioned that a lot of people converted slash reverted back to Islam due to his work. So let us do da'wah, let us build bridges both with Muslims and non-Muslims. We know that uh, some of the works have been translated to Norwegian either, and I'm from Sweden, so it's close to me. So let us, let us continue the work. The recordings of this session, dear brothers and sisters, distinguished participants, uh, it's an honor to have you all will be put in uh, YouTube and more uh, when, when the link will be shared in the WhatsApp groups for all of you to benefit from. So without any further ado, I want to thank all of the panelists once more. And I want to thank all the participants. Thank you for joining us. We will have more sessions in the near future and we will inform. So more lectures, more halakas, and you're welcome to join. So with that said, uh, I want uh, Professor Darin, please, if you can end with some dua and some recitation of maybe Surat al Asr. Jazakallah khaira. Awud billahi min al shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wal asr. Inna al insan lafi khur. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Oh, oh Allah, oh Lord, please accept our program for your uh, greatness, for your, uh, you know, uh, elevate the soul of uh, Ustaz Malik Pedri, inshallah. Make, make it for the, your contentment, ya Allah, and make us gather again uh, in this uh, academic circles uh, to make Islamic psychology the best in the world, inshallah. Amin, amin, amin. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Amin. Amin, inshallah. Thank you so much. It's an honor being part of you all. And you know, the scholars are the inheritors of the Prophet. So we are all very much thankful for all of your great works, professors, doctors, and the status. And we will keep continuing to spread the works of you. And inshallah, we can also produce uh, in the future together with you. So thank you so much. I wish you all a great continuation of your day, morning, evening, or night, whatever, whatever, wherever you live in the Ummah. It's an honor to serve and do khidmat. Jazakallah khairan. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. 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 Wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. 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 Nice to have you with us. Wa alaikum salam. 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 Alhamdulillah, it was a great session, mashallah. I felt very, I hope you were all very pleased and I thank you all for your participation. It was wonderful. I thought it was very good conducted, very good discussions, very good reflections. It's a very beautiful way to honor Professor Badr, rahimullah, to honor his legacy. Thank you for making these programs a reality. Thank you for IPSIS, uh, for OPSI and all the community yes. members involved and all the speakers also. Very yeah. brilliant speech. Thank you yes, very much. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Keep, keep the networking going, inshallah. 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 We will do it. Inshallah. It's important. Yeah. Inshallah. It's very exhilarating actually being in this group because it's very difficult to find people who are passionate about Islamic approach in psychology. Yes, yeah. yes. Alhamdulillah. It's a big movement going on around the world. You know, people yeah. are very passionate. People are very hungry for no more knowledge also, you know. So yeah. mm -hmm. it's a great momentum going on. And it's so many good things in Indonesia, Malaysia going on, and in Turkey also. So alhamdulillah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I like the tribute because it was from the student perspective also, you know. Uh, yeah. It was very beautiful. 
I actually participated in a tribute where uh, Professor Badley's son was speaking. It was also very beautiful, you know. Uh -huh. He was speaking about his relation with his father, and he looks a lot like his father, you know. Okay. So, yeah, it was a beautiful. I think his name is Abdul Qadir, if I'm not mistaken. I Qasim. Abdul Qadir. Qasim. Or, yeah. Qasim. Yeah, Abdul Qasim. Oh, Abdul Qasim. Qasim. Yeah. Qasim. Yes. yeah. 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 Qasim. Myself and Professor Mabatullah, I met him last time. We met him. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We met him last time. Yeah, in the house. Yeah, in the house. Yeah, in the house. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, all right. Assalamu alaikum, Prof. Assalamu alaikum, Salam, Prof. Thank you so much, Professor Mabatullah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Salami, tomorrow we are going to see Salami. Are you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going. Azman will come by and then we'll go together. Sorry. Okay, so much, Dr. Ami, Dr. Roslina, Dr. Salami, Professor Ibrahim, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Professor Ibrahim, I didn't know you were from Algeria. I thought you were from Turkey. So I was really, yeah, mashallah. No, no, just like I'm following the steps of Prof. Malik. I'm just traveling around the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I actually am working with one of your... Uh, well, his name is uh, Brother Zubir. He's from Algeria, psychiatrist. Very much into uh, Islamic psychology. I will connect them with you because he's Masha, very good. Masha, Masha. Yeah. Masha. Masha. Very, very, very hungry and working a lot to normalize in Algeria. Yeah. Uh, Brother Jamaluddin, uh, just I want to uh, say one thing. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, alaykum, Brother uh, Zubir. Welcome. Yeah. yeah you know. <clears throat> Once uh, I write a meal uh, to Professor Malik Badri, you know, uh, I get it from SEAL, you know, Center for 